Okay. Day six. Uh, Tofu is February 2nd, day six. Today's topic, listenings. Hey, good evening, Irene. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Good, and you? I am very well. Thank you for asking. How was your day? My day was very nice because I was very busy, but uh, just now, mm -hmm. I, I feel very cold. It's okay, my pronunciation? Yes. Okay, what about you? I'm very nice, very busy. Always a lot of activities to do, but you know, it's part of the job, right? <laughs> it's, oh. it's better for me when it's busy because the day goes fast. Yes, the day feel, feels uh, very short. Yeah. Or shorter, right? Yeah, very short or, or, or shorter. Yeah, because you are doing different activities and doing, and then when you see it's already uh, time for lunch, and when you look again, woof, the time is finished. <laughs> yes, I am Ari, with you. You are working from home, right, Ari? Sorry? You are working from home. Um, working for home. From home, you are working from home. W working, no, driving? No, no, not right now. In uh, uh, you, do you work in the office or do you work at home? Ah, no, no, in the office, teacher. Okay, okay. In the office uh, until October, I I went to my office. Okay. Uh huh. Since since October. Since, since October, sorry. Uh -huh. Since October. Uh huh. Oh, already several months working. Can you repeat this? I said you have been working for several months uh, in the office already. Yes, uh, I prefer in the office because when I was online, it's very difficult for uh, to, com to, to communicate with the uh, participants. That's great. Mm -hmm. And hello, Rocio, how are you? I think, Irene, I think Rocio is still a little bit silent there. <laughs> ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Still silent. Yeah. Usually, I don't know, maybe she's having some problems with the audio. Uh, nowadays, uh, I have problem with uh, the last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I was problem with my internet because I um, I connected connected. Uh, Hello. Of myself. 
Hello, Rocio. Ah, with your cell phone, Irene. Uh -huh. when, when I to connect with my cell phone, it's very bad on internet. It, it, I prefer that my computer. Just normally with the cell phone is is it, not so good. It's better with the with the Wi-Fi. Uh -huh. It's better the Wi-Fi. It's okay. And how was your day, Rocio? Uh, fine, fine, thanks. How about you? <laughs> oh, very well, thank you. We were talking with Irene that we had very busy days today with many different activities. Oh, yes. Uh, probably because it's the beginning of the year. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of things to do. Yeah. Yes, but we are in the second month from the and the work is harder. <laughs> yeah. Imagine already the second month. It's, it's amazing how fast. Yes. The time is running fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel that we are still in, in the quarantine, but you know, is <laughs> the life is continuing. We just yes. working and trying only the difference. So now only you have to wear the mask and you have to put alcohol gel and but the life you continue the normal. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I I'm trying to to do some uh, examinations um, about uh, because because I have to do some checks in health <laughs> uh, because uh, you have to um, how do you say uh, approach <laughs> you take advantage that that you are uh, you have you have time to do some um, checks medical checks and I, I have, I went to, to the of town, how do you say the, the medic of the eyes? <laughs> um, yes, I, I, yes, I went to, to the ophthalmologist today. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. It is, and everything is okay? Your eyes yeah. are okay? Yes, yes. Only a little bit uh, with uh, the, the, my, my uh, glasses mm -hmm. has to be changed a little bit. <laughs> the, the measurement. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is normal, it's not a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, how are you? How was your day? Thank you, teacher. I'm okay. I'm ready for your English class. Okay. All right. That's great. Let's get to it then. Um, first, I hope you guys finished already lesson one, right? The, the part one is complete in the platform. Mm. Yes. No, no yet, teacher. Not yet. I, I have to, to complete. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Remember, don't don't accumulate too much because already we are in part two, and then on Saturday and Sunday next week, in, in three classes we are in part three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me share my screen with you, and we can see a couple of things. All right. So, uh, the first thing is yesterday we were finishing off here in function questions, okay? Now, the idea of function questions is your interpretation, right? What, what, does, what is the real meaning, okay? So, what is, the, what is the man doing or what do you understand he's doing? What does the professor mean uh, when she speaks or what does the professor mean in the case of this one when he speaks? So. It's not only the words that you hear, but what you understand, what is in the per interpretation for this. Many times, this is part of the expressions 
that we learn, like in Spanish or in other areas where uh, mm -hmm. maybe I don't know the language, but if somebody says, hey, Daniel, how are you? Ah, everything blue. What does the speaker mean? A, the sky is blue. B, uh, he is painting today. C, he is happy. D, he is sad. That's, that's kind of, that's the idea, right? That according to the context, what is the idea for it? Now, each one is a little bit different, but that's the, that's the main concept for it. And that's what we want to have, okay? So uh, yesterday we were working on that one. Are there any questions about any of those? Were you able to complete them or are there some that are still you didn't finish? The second motion teacher is doing for to finish. The second one, <laughs> the second option. I like it. It's just like the multiple choice, right? A or B? Ah, I pick B, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's the idea. The idea is we're gonna we're gonna work on them and try to get them completed. Now, remember a couple of the tips that we talked about yesterday. Um, Danielle, tell me what are some of the tips or the things that we learn to help us when we are listening? Let me see. The first is uh, the understand the main idea. Okay. okay, good. Yeah. Irene, what's another one? I don't remember very I, I don't remember very well teacher, but I guess is the uh, catch up the major idea. Okay. Okay. Well let me very good as well. Very good as well. Well let me help you out. So the idea yes, get the main ideas, but the most the important is we need to listen um, for a couple of things. One is the intonation, right? If the intonation is going up or down, if we can interpret that if it's sarcasm, if it's anger, if it's doubt, this is the first one, the intonation, not only the words. You need to hear where their pauses are, okay? The second, the second one is exactly what you said, is finding the main ideas. But to find those main ideas is we use the keys, right? The key words, for example, sequence, then, after, before, uh, then we also use for cause and effect. Therefore, uh, although, but, and these are the words that help us to interpret and to make sure that we are understanding what we're listening to. It's not easy because it, the conversation has a lot of words. And sometimes maybe one of the words uh, you don't know. Now, this is important because in yesterday, they didn't say in the tips. But the important is that if you don't understand the word, don't worry about it. Don't stay focused. Don't lose the concentration for the main idea, okay? Because many times when you don't know a word or you don't know a phrase, you say, oh, what, what does that mean? What, what, what is that? And then, oh, then you have no idea and you lose the rest of the conversation. This is a big problem. This is usually the bigger problem than not understanding one word. Usually the bigger problem is that you lose the concentration because the person is talking and talking and yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> but no, this is the hard part. This is where we need to stay focused. All right, well, since there's only three of us today, uh, we don't have enough to make pairs. So let's try it together. Let me share my screen with you and let's work together on it to see what we can come up with. Okay, let's listen to this one. Okay, now that I have all your decisions, your individual and group decisions written on the board, I want to show you this transparency of the, um, each choice has a risk factor. So here are the statistics showing how risky, how much of a gamble each of the alternatives is. 
So take a moment to compare the risk values with the choices you made. What kind of jumps out at you? Yes, Jason? Well, the individual decisions within each group are, well, not always, but they tend to be less risky than the decision the group made. Right. Do you see how, as individuals, most of you were not willing to take the gamble? But as a group, you were. The term for this phenomenon is risky shift. Risky shift. A shift in position from less risky to more risky. If we were to average the risk factor of the group's individual members, it usually, but not always, shows that individuals are more cautious about taking a gamble, while a group decision has a higher risk. So what implications does this have? Think about business and political decisions in particular. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. So take a moment to compare the risk values with the choices you made. What kind of jumps out at you? What does the professor mean when she says this? What kind of jumps out at you? Okay. Hang on. Uh, sorry, we were we were doing exercise number two, not number one. That's why the screen was on number two. Okay. But we'll do number one. I thought it's only because I, I, I assumed yesterday you finished number one. Okay. Yes. Here we go. So, the question is, why does the professor say that? What jumps mm -hmm. out at you? Oops, sorry, not number three, number two. Mm -hmm. What does the professor mean when the when she says, what jumps out at you? I think it's me. What? Seems to be D. The option. The letter B. D no D D. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think? The letter C. Okay, letter C. Maybe it's I letter think B. it's letter B, the second one. Okay. <laughs> letter B. Equally. <laughs> Okay, well, here, since I'll show you this one. Okay, well, and that one will go with letter A, since nobody chose and everybody has a different one. Everybody has B, C, or D. So we'll go with letter A to have something different. We'll check in a moment, okay? Now, uh, I, I see... The question was for number one. Okay, we can listen to number one and make sure that you understand, okay? So let's listen to number one and see. Sue, you know you missed the deadline, don't you? Yes, I know, but could I get my report in by early next week? Well, I'm not so concerned about deadlines as such. We all have setbacks from time to time. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm more concerned about your getting behind in general. I've seen students get so far behind that they can't catch up. If you can't keep up in this course, you're really wasting my time and your time and money. If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. If you can't keep up in this course, you're really wasting my time and your time and money. If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. What does the professor mean when he says this? If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. What do letter, you letter D. Letter? D for me. Okay. 
Let, I, I chose yesterday letter C. Okay. And? Yeah. Which one, Rocio? C. Sí. Sí. Okay. All right. So we have B, C, and D. Again, I think we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll go with C. We're going to check in just a moment. Oh, uh huh. Okay. It's getting a little bit harder. And I'll explain them in a moment. And let's, let's listen to the last one, to number three. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? So that tone tells you what? Letter D. 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 Second one. Yes. D. Letter D. The last one for me. The, the last, last one. one. Yes. Last one. Okay. Let's try the last one then. I see you tend to agree on that one. Okay. There you go. Now, here. If you notice, I changed your answers. Number two, everybody was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And number one, the same. The idea was letter C. Now, what does the professor mean when he says, then you're wasting my time and yours? Is, is not letter A. It's not really that he's wasting his time and money and her money. Because it's, it's an expression. It doesn't mean that it's really... The question is that he says that I have seen many students that can't catch up, okay? So it's not the problem. At the beginning, he says, oh, the problem is not one assignment because this is, everybody has a life, it's normal. The problem is if this is a, a moment where there are students that cannot catch up, that means there's too much work that has accumulated, okay? That's why it was letter C, okay? Number two, he used the expression, what jumps out at you? What jumps out at you is what grabs your attention. What do you see first? That's the idea. So what do you see first is because it's obvious. It's like if you see um, a lot of green, uh, a, a lot of trees, and then one red hat. Uh, the red hat is going to jump out at you because it's very different to the others. Okay? That's why number two was letter A. You can understand from the expression jumps out of you is what gets your attention. Okay. And uh, what is the man doing when he says that? Okay. Uh, he's asking for the confirm for confirmation about his understanding of what the woman said. Because he says, really? You think I can do that? That he's checking that if she really, if she's sure about it, or he's checking if, if she makes, if she understands what he's, what he's asking. And then she says, yes, if it's within a reasonable time. And that's how we know that it's the right one. Okay. So as we can see, it's, it's not only the listening, it's making sure that we understand those expressions, making sure that those things are clear for us. Are there any questions for any of those? No. no, no, no. And, you know, after the explanation, it's easy, but the question is, how can we identify during the exercises? That the important is, I play one time, but you and your partner is not necessary one time. This is a practice. You can listen more than one time. Yes, in the exam, you only have one time. 
that's okay because that's the exam but you need to prepare for the exam and to prepare for the exam and the things sometimes you listen more than once the great way or a great technique also is discuss with your partner and why not just i think is a i think is b no i think is b because he uses the expression or she uses the expression this this obligates you to have to defend your point this obligates you to have to listen and give specific information okay because if you only say i think it's b but you don't know why is the thing marine this you are guessing is not the reality that you understand okay and we want to make sure that you understand rocio do you have a question or a comment no it's okay Okay, yeah. now that we have a now that we have at least four people, we can try to do the next exercise, which is added to questions. Okay, now this one, you have to listen because this one is a little bit more difficult because this has to do with the person's attitude. Okay, hey, Daniel, how are you? And he says, fine. Thank you. Woof. <laughs> and what is the attitude? The words say fine, but the attitude says angry, angry upset or right so that's the idea so with our partners uh, we are going to do the next exercise which is attitude questions i'll i'll show you so to make sure that it's clear and you understand with your partners where okay so this is from a uh, section two listening and it's the part two is the second listening exercise and you're going to listen and as you can see you have several questions there are eight of them okay and there are many so the first with your partners is read all of the questions make sure you understand what are the meanings of those words what are those attitudes do you understand what is uh, critical what is offended do you understand what is the difference between each of those okay oh wait i don't know why it Give me a second, it just went to the wrong website. But the idea is for each one, make sure that you understand what is the different attitudes that they have, that they're explaining to you. Here we go. So you discuss with your partner, do you understand what is forgiving? What is, what is defensive? What is sympathetic, excited? Then you listen and make your choices. Okay, let's go to our groups. Remember, you can listen more than once. It's okay to listen more than once. This is part of the class. Okay, listen the number one. Okay, let me. Make sure you understand the vocabulary first, okay? Okay. Okay. Can I hear? I, I already don't, <laughs> but yeah. yes, I can see your screen. One. Are you a little old to be reading comic books? Hey, this isn't just any comic book. It's a Walt Disney classic. Classic or not, this is a university. I'll have you know that this is required reading for my American popular culture course. What? I, I can't believe it. You can, you can hear me, right? <laughs> One. Aren't you a little old to be reading comic books? Hey, this isn't just any comic book. It's a Walt Disney literature course. And you're reading comic books? Well, this isn't the only required reading material in the course. We have to read a lot about the events that influence the comic book writers and study contemporary art movements and how women and minorities are depicted in comics and other pop art. This course isn't as easy as you think.
You are a good sensei? Mm -hmm. the, I think the woman is a critical. For me too, the critical. Uh, she, feel, she feels critical. Critical, yes. The main, I think the defense, defensible. The, the men. The men. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are agree, I listen the, the information for, for, for asking the, the number one. Okay. Great. I signed up for an American history course. It's about the Revolutionary War period with Professor Lewis. He's fantastic. Uh, history. Sounds boring to me. I never did like history. How can you find history boring when, oh, I guess you never had a teacher like Dr. Lewis. He describes the events so vividly that it seems as though you're actually there, like caught up in the issues. You would really get into it. Well, maybe. Oh, come on. Why don't you take it? It's not too late to add a course. Well, I don't need it for my major, and there are other courses I'd rather take as electives. You have a reason says is the attitude is of defensive. The number three. Oh my goodness. Where are my, my audio? I signed up for an American history course. It's about the Revolutionary War period with Professor Lewis. He's fantastic. Uh, history. Sounds boring to me. I never did like history. How can you find history boring when, oh, I guess you never had a teacher like Dr. Lewis. He describes the events so vividly that it seems as though you're actually there, like caught up in the issues. You would really get into it. Well, maybe. Oh, come on. Why don't you take it? It's not too late to add a course. Well, I don't need it for my major, and there are other courses I'd rather take as electives. Sí, es, es defensive. Ah, let me check. The woman is... Critical. Excited, because she is... Talking about number two. Literature oh. with exciting. But it's not the number two, Rosina. No, no, the the first one and the second one is the it's the same. Oh, yeah. the same, and the third and the fourth is for the second part. Mm. Uh -huh. uh. Uh -huh. I am um, one. What do you think about the man? The it's man. An I, 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 I think it's worry. Ah, but you have the answer there. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I, yes, I was checking but, my, but, my my dashboard. My... But did you, yes. Okay. Don't you hear about the man don't want to maybe take, worry to, to or take, to take the literature as signature? If you want, we can hear again. No, no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. He's, oh, not, he's, not, he's not interested to take uh -huh. literature. literature. Uh-huh. Okay. And the third part. Four new people move in. I'm sorry, but not in this case. The walls are dirty and the refrigerator doesn't work. And... I see. Um, well, that's highly unusual. Could you please tell me the number of your unit? Um, it's 42 in South Court. 42? Are you sure? Let me look. And your name? Anderson. Daniel Anderson. Ah, I see. Here's the problem. You've been issued the wrong unit. 
Number 42 hasn't been redecorated yet. I'm really sorry about this. Let's see. You should have been given number 43. It's directly across from number 42. I I think the the men is uh, on the oh, uniters uni uniters then uniters then uh huh okay uninterested uninterested un uninterested uninterested <laughs> it's very difficult the pronunciation <laughs> uninterested okay. The next one, number five. Number five. Uh, the, the answer for, for this question is, is in the same information, teacher. Yes, it is. Okay. Just listen to the same audio and everything is there. Okay. I listen, I listen uh, enthous enthusiastic the woman in what about you, Ceci? I agree with you. Uh, I listen the enthusiastic, the woman, the woman. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the main is annoying, right? Mm, the welcoming. Uh, I I think the main is a work welcoming, welcoming. Uh -huh, welcoming. Okay. And uh, what offset or surprise? Uh, maybe upset. Upset. And the woman for me is help, 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 right? Uh, uh huh. Help. Helpful, help, help, helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, great, congratulations for you. <laughs> <laughs> the boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Pretty good, everybody finished, right? I saw that that was completed. Um, that seemed to be easier. You, that seemed to be easier than the first exercise for you, interpreting what the person is saying. Yes. Yes? Yes, I think so. That's good. So that means at least the, the idea for the tones, maybe you don't understand the words, but you can hear the ideas. And this is from our cultures and language, right? We can tell when someone is being nice, even if we don't understand the words, right? Somebody can be going very, uh, their their tone, their the way they say something sounds very angry. Oof, I don't know, but he's angry, the person, okay? The next one that we have, or the next listening questions that we have, okay, are here. And this is organization questions, okay? So we listen to uh, a lecture, okay, the same, we have several of them, okay? And then the idea is, we're, it's just about organization. What, like the cause, what happens first, what happens next, okay? So why does the speaker mention fires? What's the, what are the reasons for these? Why does the speaker mention aspirin bottles? Why does the professor mention orange peels? Why does the professor regret garbage, sorry, uh, why does the professor regret that most garbage is organic? things like this. As you can see, there are several of them, okay? So for this tip, just like in the exam, the best thing to do is read the questions before the listening, right? You have to read quickly. That way, you know when you are listening, you have an idea. Ah, I need to identify this word or I need to identify this concept. But if you listen and then read the questions, you forget or you don't remember because you don't know what is important and what's not important. But if, if I tell you, listen for the number in the conversation, ah, you are listening, 
very carefully because you are listening for the number. Maybe it's a date, maybe it's a phone number, maybe it's a weight, maybe it's a credit card, but you know what you are listening for. So for this technique, for this step, with your partners, read the question and then listen and see if that can help you. The problem is when you are in the exam, you have to read quickly. You have time to read, but you don't have time to go slowly. You can answer your questions and read the next question, but you have to be very fast in the reading because you don't have time to analyze it. So here we're going to begin with practicing the exercise. Read and then listen. Okay. All right. So remember, this is the yes. Yeah, the next yes. Yeah, yes. A question. Yes. Uh, just read the, the question or maybe read the possible answers too. No, no. Excellent. Excellent, Daniel. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't explain. Yes. Read the question and is necessary. Read the possible answers. Read the possible answers because the possible answers help you when you are listening, identify what you need to hear, what needs to be heard. Okay. All right. Let's go to our groups. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let me share the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Do you read? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go. Thank you. Let's go. It used to be that the safety of a house was judged simply by whether it stood up or not. Well, things have changed. Uh, during the 20th century, people began to build houses with synthetic materials. And unfortunately, these materials have proved over time that they endanger the health of the owners or uh, the house's occupants, since the owner doesn't necessarily live in the place. So. Um, what are these synthetic materials? Well, asbestos, for example. Asbestos, which was used as roofing sheets and paneling. This was found to cause memory loss. No, I'm sorry. It causes lung cancer. Asbestos has been found to cause lung cancer and formaldehyde causes memory loss. Formaldehyde was used in um, insulating foams, synthetic resins and uh, glues in things like plywood, chipboard, hardboard. Formaldehyde used in this way causes damage to the nervous system and, as I said before, memory loss, severe memory loss. Um, then there are wood preservatives. Now, they contain, wood preservatives contain potent fungicides and insecticides. These cause cirrhosis of the liver, bone marrow atrophy, and nervous disorders. I'm really painting a bleak picture, aren't I? And, uh, and that brings us to paints. At one time, lead was the major ingredient in paint. You may think that when lead levels were restricted due to lead poisoning, that was the end of the problem. Now, get this. Paint technologists came up with even more poisonous metals, such as cadmium, to add to paints. Huh. Okay. Uh, the dangers of synthetic material are most apparent when a fire breaks out. Experts say that today, more people are killed by toxic fumes in house fires than by the fire itself. We may have used a lot of synthetic materials in house building, but in fact, for every synthetic material used in a home, there's a biological or natural counterpart. Okay, well, we can't all go, <laughs> we can't very well go and tear down our houses and start from scratch. However, there are ways to recognize and safely remove some synthetic material and replace it with natural alternatives. One.
Yeah. It's too a long conversation. Long conversation. Yes. Uh, why does the speaker mention files? To show okay. to let now, people so Simon Daniel, here is the tip for right uh -huh. for the practice. You select the answer that you think, and then you listen again to see if you have the correct information. So you uh, you are doing it correctly already. First, you read the question and you read the possible answers, then you listen. You make a selection and you listen again to see if that is logical for what you hear again. Okay. 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 What uh, do you think? I, I, I think it's letter C. Oh, you have a. Oh. I, I think I agree with you. The number two, the letter B. Okay. Irene. Uh, and remember it remember it's good so you read the question you read the answers you listen and you choose an answer now listen again listen again to see if your answer is correct listen if you can identify that information ah, okay okay thank you, you want for to your advice two times yeah okay thank you mm -hmm. okay again it used to be that the safety of a house was judged simply by whether it stood up or not. Well, things have changed. Uh, during the 20th century, people began to build houses with synthetic materials. And unfortunately, these materials have proved over time that they endanger the health of the owners or uh, the house's occupants, since the owner doesn't necessarily live in the place. So. Uh, what are these synthetic materials? Well, asbestos, for example. Asbestos, which was used as roofing sheets and paneling. This was found to cause memory loss. No, I'm sorry. It causes lung cancer. Asbestos has been found to cause lung cancer and formaldehyde causes memory loss. Formaldehyde was used in um, insulating foams, synthetic resins and uh, glues in things like plywood, chipboard, cardboard. Formaldehyde used in this way causes damage to the nervous system and, as I said before, memory loss, severe memory loss. Um, then there are wood preservatives. Now, they contain, wood preservatives contain potent fungicides and insecticides. These cause cirrhosis of the liver, bone marrow atrophy, and nervous disorders. I'm really painting a bleak picture, aren't I? And, uh, and that brings us to paints. At one time, lead was the major ingredient in paint. You may think that when lead levels were restricted due to lead poisoning, that was the end of the problem. Now, get this. Paint technologists came up with even more poisonous metals, such as cadmium, to add to paints. <laughs> okay. Uh, the dangers of synthetic material are most apparent when a fire breaks out. Experts say that today, more people are killed by toxic fumes in house fires than by the fire itself. We may have used a lot of synthetic materials in house building, but in fact, for every synthetic material used in a home, there's a biological or natural counterpart. Okay, well, we can't all go, we can't very well go and tear down our houses and start from scratch. However, there are ways to recognize and safely remove some synthetic material and replace it with natural alternatives. One. Definitely answer for me. <laughs> what about you? Yes, 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 I agree with you. Okay. The number, the number two. The number two, okay. Hmm. 
It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention. There a Rosie. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah, shoes. Letter B, but I think it's letter A. Yeah. What do you think? Keep letter A or letter B? I think it's between letter A and letter B. To illustrate how unsafe wooden houses are. Yes, because she explained the different way uh, the how the building the houses is sometimes the houses is not a, with a synthetic materials or different uh, playables and uh, that is dangerous for the life because uh, you can get a cancer or maybe some illnesses and maybe the house could get fire too because the materials are synthetic yes but wooden houses with not natural uh -huh. but if, if the letter a only say wooden houses yes i i, I think it's letter b okay mm -hmm. you you are yeah you're right you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let go to read first. Even by guess inventor. Why does the speaker mention uh, spirit bottles? Mm -hmm. Demonstrate the continuing process of invention. To demonstrate the continuing process of invention to illustrate failures, to show how invention can cause fatalities, to show that you can satisfy everybody all the time. Hmm. Okay, listen. Let's go to listen. It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention. And this may be true in some cases, but most things that people need already exist. We inventors tend to be a group of dissatisfied people. We see the drawbacks of products that are already in existence. I think most people do. Think of something that annoys you, your partner leaving the cap off the toothpaste, for instance. Now, the difference between most people and an inventor is that while most people grumble, an inventor starts to visualize solutions. We really get swept away with this enthusiasm, this passion for remedying the problem. We aren't grumpy, unhappy people. But let me say this. We may be dissatisfied, but we also tend to be very optimistic problem solvers. One has to be optimistic, extremely optimistic, to persist through the inevitable failures. Why? Because we fail a lot. But inventors thrive on failures. Where most people get discouraged and give up, inventors use failures as stepping stones to new approaches and then to eventual success. I shouldn't say success, because once the invention is completed, we often see another fault. Sometimes, in fact, an invention brings about a change that requires another invention. A case in point is the aspirin bottle. People get discouraged and give up. Inventors use failures as stepping stones to new approaches and then to eventual success. I shouldn't say success, because once the invention is completed, we often see another fault. Sometimes, in fact, an invention brings about a change that requires another invention. A case in point is the aspirin bottle. Small children manage to get into aspirin bottles with, um, unfortunately, sometimes fatal results. So the childproof bottle cap was invented. However, arthritis.
colitis sufferers couldn't open the childproof bottle to get their medicine. In response to this problem, the two-way cap was invented. So now, users can choose the most convenient way to close the bottle. Problem solved? No, because a small child and an arthritis sufferer could share the same household. What are we going to do about it? Let's toss some ideas around to get your inventor brains operating. Definitely answer for me, Ceci. <laughs> yes, yes, the, to demonstrate the continuing process of invention. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, one the number three. Number three, okay. One way cultural anthropologists can study a culture is by sifting through garbage dumps. Garbage is the remains of what a society used or threw away. Let's take, for example, an orange peel. What can I tell by looking at an orange peel? Well, um, I think you could possibly tell whether that orange was eaten or made into juice. Okay, good. Hmm. Let's imagine that we have a pile of orange peels, okay? This pile of orange peels indicates they were squeezed to make juice. What information can I gain from that? You could find out, uh, count those peels and estimate the number of oranges used. Uh, enough for two glasses may indicate a single person or, or a couple. And enough for a couple of quarts might indicate a family. Good. So we can make estimates on numbers of people. We can make even more assumptions. For example, what could we infer if there's enough for 50 people? Um, what would a seasonal change in the number of peels indicate? As you can see, an analysis of what's discarded can help us map out patterns and give us insights into human behavior. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on one's point of view, much of what's thrown away is organic. So when we're sifting through, say, the garbage dump of a Paleolithic village, the remains are limited. Of course, there are places where artifacts are better preserved, areas with dry desert air, such as Egypt, for instance, or with freezing temperatures, such as the Arctic regions. Oh, we've run out of time. Okay, I want you to think about, when you pass a pile of garbage, look at it and think about what that garbage can tell you tomorrow we'll discuss cultural anthropologists and the issue of grave robbing which one Ceci? Or mm. you? it's a very conscious <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, the, as you can see, the listening is not easy. And that's why I say that it's necessary if, for you to change your listening habits. It's good to watch Netflix in English or music or videos or things in English. It helps you with the normal conversation English, normal language English. If you need to do this exam and you plan to apply or go to another, you need to change the listening form, something more difficult, more academic, okay? Different types of vocabulary that is used that is not common everyday conversation, okay? Yeah. So, yes, Rocio? No, no, I agree. <laughs> okay. I agree, I okay. agree. Okay, great, great. So I hope the tips help you. Remember, it's, it's difficult and it takes time. That's why it's necessary to try to continue every day a little bit in the platform, a little bit, a little bit, because only a few exercises. But look, 15 minutes and the groups only did three, three listenings. So it's, yes, 
you need time because you want to practice for exercise not only a uh, a no it's not a okay i put b no 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 ah it's not b it's c no 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 you want to do because you are learning not just to complete okay all right guys have a good night and i'll see you tomorrow good night teacher all right bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Good okay night. thank you see you see you